I'm Susan Euler. We all know what paint is, more or less. It's that colored substance that comes in cans, tubes, spray cans, bottles, sometimes in dried cakes. Besides walls, paint can be applied to just about any surface to create a work of art we call a painting. Now we all realize that it takes years of education and practice, not to mention talent and a great deal of luck, to become an artist on the level of Rembrandt, or your painting instructor for that matter, as generations of art students will attest. But turning to a more philosophical discussion, how is paint made? When was it invented? How has it changed over time? Excellent questions, dude, and I think the answers will surprise you. Paint, all paint, is made from three basic types of ingredients, pigment, a binder, and a solvent. First is pigment. That's what produces the color. Pigments are usually in powdered form. They can be made of minerals such as malachite, organic substances such as charcoal, plant roots, berries, or flowers, as well as insects. The famous Roman Tyrian purple, which we would call more of a burgundy red, was made from the glands of a sea snail known as a murex. Synthetic pigments made from chemicals were introduced in the 19th century. The second ingredient is called a binder. The binder is what holds the grains of pigment together, makes the paint stick to the surface, and helps stop it from fading. Examples of binders include egg yolk, linseed oil, gum arabic, and wax. Each of these binders produce a different type of paint. Linseed oil, for example, is the binder used in oil paint. Gum arabic is used for watercolors. Modern latex paint originally used natural rubber, or latex, as the binder. Today, the latex in latex paint has been replaced with synthetic compounds such as acrylic or vinyl, hence the name acrylic paint. The final ingredient is the solvent. The solvent is the liquid that controls the thinness or thickness of the paint. Solvents include water, which is used for watercolor, tempera, and latex paint. Turpentine and mineral spirits are used for oil-based paints. Milk is the solvent used in milk paint, although milk-based paint is not common today. So surprisingly, the recipe for paint is very much like a recipe for cake batter. It even uses some of the same ingredients, such as eggs, water, and milk. But be aware, the minerals, binders, and solvents used in paint are not exactly like those used in cake batter. Although they may seem similar, they are very often toxic. Cobalt and cadmium, for example. This is a problem for kids, but as an adult, you shouldn't worry about it unless you're planning to eat paint or use it for makeup. In any case, there are now non-toxic versions of these colors available. And lead, which was once a standard ingredient in both artist paint and house paint, is no longer used at all. Still, and I know I don't have to tell you this, but don't eat paint, non-toxic or otherwise. Or even wipe your mouth when your hands are covered with paint. I know from experience. Use only as directed. If all this sounds pretty complicated, you may now be thinking, obviously paint was a fairly modern invention. Well, let's find out. Some of you probably already know that paint was invented during the Stone Age because you learned about cave paintings in school. But when during the Stone Age? Was paint invented A, 100,000 years ago, B, 35,000 years ago, or C, 15,000 years ago? The answer is A, 100,000 years ago. I can hardly believe it myself because this puts the invention of paint back to the Upper Paleolithic period during the Ice Age in Northern Europe. But paint wasn't invented in Northern Europe. The first evidence of Stone Age paint production was found in what archaeologists refer to as a paint workshop in the Blombos Cave on the coast of South Africa. Paint samples from the site have been dated to as early as 100,000 years ago. Items found include grinding stones, hammers, and abalone shell containers used for pounding, mixing, and storing a variety of paints. These paints were made from ground ochre, bones, and charcoal, using animal fat and other fatty substances as a binder. In other words, much like modern paint. Yes, indeed. Modern paint pigments, Conti crayons, and drawing pencils are still made from burnt bone, charcoal, and ochre. Ochre is a sedimentary rock made of clay pigmented by the mineral iron hematite. Both ochre and hematite come in a range of colors called earth tones. Ochre is found nearly everywhere, for example, in the painted desert in Arizona. So how did early humans figure out that you could grind up rocks to make paint? 
We'll never know, of course, but a possible clue comes from Blombo's cave and this carved ochre rock. The carving process would have produced flakes and crumbles that some brilliant person figured could be put to good use. That's how things are always invented. Later Stone Age artists in Europe also used ochre, bone, and charcoal pigments to make paint. Returning to the quiz, 35,000 years ago is the date of the paintings in Chauvet Cave in France, the earliest known paintings in Europe. 15,000 years ago is the date of Altamira in Spain, where the first cave paintings were discovered in modern times, and originally thought to be fake, by the way. But getting back to the paint itself, based on the ever-popular Savage Caveman stereotype, you may be thinking that even using the same basic ingredients, Stone Age paint must have been a lot less sophisticated than what we use today. But no, it really wasn't. So how good was Stone Age paint? Darn good. Consider that these paints were applied to rough, damp, difficult to reach cave walls thousands and thousands of years ago. Yet they have remained vivid and detailed and have not cracked or peeled. In some instances, later paintings or drawings were placed over earlier ones which seemed to have faded, an indication that Stone Age people, like modern people, were constantly developing new technology, including making better, brighter, more durable paint. And they were amazingly successful. We really have a lot in common with our ancient ancestors. Many innovations have been made since then. At the beginning of the Bronze Age, people realized that if you can grind up one type of rock to make paint, then you can grind up other rocks as well. So, around 3000 BC, lots of new mineral-based colors began to appear. Favorites among the ancient Egyptians include orpiment, yellow, azurite, blue, and malachite, green. This tomb ceiling may have been painted with azurite, but more likely it's painted in Egyptian blue. Egyptian blue was made by grinding sand, lime, sodium carbonate, and copper ore together, then heating them to a high temperature. Invented during the fourth dynasty, Egyptian blue was the first artificial pigment ever made. Another Bronze Age innovation is fresco, a method of painting that involves applying dry pigments mixed with water directly to wet lime plaster. When the plaster dries, the painting becomes part of the plaster itself. So as long as the plaster survives, even in pieces, the fresco will survive. The oldest frescoes date from the 1600s BC and were created by the Greek Bronze Age Minoan and Mycenaean civilizations. Fresco will be the painting media most often used during Roman times, both for wall painting and for smaller decorative works such as these found recently in Pompeii. Note the wall where the plaster has fallen off. Fresco is also the medium used by the great mural artists of the late Middle Ages through the 18th century. Artists such as Giotto, Masaccio, Michelangelo, and Tiepolo all worked extensively in fresco. Until the 15th century, panel paintings and easel paintings were made using egg tempera. Egg tempera is a water-based paint that is mixed with egg yolk to make it permanent. This famous painting by Botticelli is done in egg tempera. I bet you thought it was done in oil paint. In the 15th century, however, oil paint was a brand new medium. Well, not exactly brand new. It was invented in Asia in the 600s AD and brought to Europe during the 11th century, where it was only used to paint furniture and decorative items. But in the first decades of the Renaissance, artists in Northern Europe, such as Jean Van Eyck, began using oil to paint pictures, not just furniture. The stunning detail that can be achieved by applying layer upon layer of oil glazes changed art forever. Italian Renaissance historian Giorgio Vasari credits Van Eyck for inventing oil paint, but what he really did was popularize it. Be that as it may, by the beginning of the 16th century, the period known as the High Renaissance, oil paint had eclipsed egg tempera to become the painting media of choice for easel painters. From then on, until acrylic paint was perfected in the 1960s, almost all easel painters in both Europe and America aspired to be oil painters. But there was a catch. The artists or their assistants had to grind and mix the paint themselves, just like in the Stone Age. Although by the 19th century, paints mixed by a colorman were available. Then in 1841, the American portraitist John Golf Rand invented a method of packaging paint in metal sealable tubes. Tube paint was one of painting's greatest innovations, 
because it made painting in oils possible outside of a studio setting. Hand mixed paint is messy and difficult to transport, but paint in tubes is easy to pack up and carry, and tubes can be tightly sealed to prevent them from spilling or drying out. Pierre Auguste Renoir explained, without paint in tubes, there would have been no impressionism. A new era of painting had begun. Now everyone, amateur as well as professional, could use oil paint both indoors and out, with no grinding or mixing required. For the 10-Minute Professor, this is Dr. Susan Ray Euler. Thanks for tuning in.